Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Shaptur Shibanji and I'm coming back to you again with a very interesting episode here today regarding common ailments. I've done a few series on common ailments earlier on about constipation, headache and this is a very interesting and very important and very practical topic which is hemorrhoids. So we'll be talking about some lesser known medicines for hemorrhoids. I'll be doing another um, series hopefully on polycress on hemorrhoids but I'll be sharing with you a few lesser known or medium sized remedies for hemorrhoids and I'll be trying to share with you the comparative metromedica of these wonderful remedies. So the first remedy in this list which is of prime importance is Peonia. All of these remedies you'll find in Borike's Metromedica, Clark's Dictionary and which has wonderful wonderful practical results. I've learned this as an ancestral tip and have verified it with very many patients across the years as well. Peonia is a very interesting remedy where one of the prime indications is there is a lot of itching in the anus. So any rectal disease, not just hemorrhoids, but even you know re rectal fistulas, fissures, where you have a lot of itching in the anus, your peonia is a go-to remedy. Along with the itching in the anus, what you can find with peonia is there is a lot of burning in the rectum. But the interesting thing which goes along with the burning in peonia is there is an internal chilliness. So externally in the anal region they may feel burning but there is an internal chilliness in case of peonia. And this pain remains for hours after stool in case of peonia. So a lot of pain which remains hours after stool. Sometimes if you examine locally you will see purple colored crusts, purple colored crusts in case of peonia. So purple colored um, crusts in case of peonia. So hemorrhoids, fissures, fistulas, in any cases where there is a lot of itching in the rectum, peonia is a very important remedy. And remember two other remedies where you have itching in the rectum, you have that in petrocellinum and obviously we'll do the polycris later on where you have that in sulfur as well. But in case of petrocellinum, remember there is always an urgency for urine. Whenever they get an urge for urine, it's, you know, they jump up and down with pain. So that urine urgency is very important for petrocellinum. Obviously that's not the case with peonia. So you know those cases where there's a lot of rectal itching with any kind of rectal pathology, your well-selected medicines have failed, think of peonia. Peonia works best with 30C. So 30C is a wonderful potency for using peonia in such cases. Our next remedy in this list and I'd like to compare two very important remedies here to understand the comparative metromedica and my friends you have that on one hand you have the Esculus and the other hand you have Collinsonia. Two very important sister remedies and two very very good medium sized remedies for hemorrhoids. So when you try to understand the comparative metromedica you have to understand, yes, both the remedies are useful for um, piles or hemorrhoids. Now what happens in case of Collinsonia, it's a celebrated remedy for bleeding hemorrhoids. So bleeding is a very important factor for Collinsonia's hemorrhoids. Whereas in case of Esculus, my friends, Dr. Clark mentions in his dictionary that Esculus hemorrhoids do not bleed as a rule. So whenever you are confused between two of these great, wonderful hemorrhoidal remedies, remember Esculus hemorrhoids do not bleed as a rule, Dr. Clark mentions that. Whereas in case of Collinsonia, bleeding is a very important factor for Collinsonia. Now when you consider the sensation of Collinsonia, you will find there is a stick-like sensation in the rectum. So sharp sticks are pricking in the rectum. There is a sense of constriction in the rectum. But what is practically important, you have to understand what the patient says, what the patient will express to you, that I feel a weight in the rectum and that is many Collinsonia patients will tell you that I feel heavy in my rectum, I feel a weight in my rectum and which is a very important practical differentiation between Collinsonia and Esculus. Whereas in case of Esculus, my friends, you will find a sensation of stick in the rectum. Stick sensation, there's sharp sticks are pricking in the rectum, that is what you will find with Esculus. So that's very important to understand with the two remedies. Where, where in Collinsonia patient will specifically tell you of a weight feeling, of a heaviness in the rectum, which is very, very important. 
Now, in case of Collinsonia, what is also important, you have always constipation. It is one of the most obstinate constipation in Collinsonia. Whereas, in case of Esculus, constipation may or may not be there. My reference for this compared to Metro Medica is again Dr. Clark's dictionary where he discusses about Collinsonia and Esculus and he gives a wonderful compared to Metro Medica of the two remedies. So, constipation may or may not be there. Whereas, in case of Esculus, constipation is a very important factor. Obstinate constipation associated with hemorrhoids, uh, but especially you will find that obstinate constipation even during pregnancy. It is a wonderful med med it's a wonderful remedy for pregnancy hemorrhoids, pregnancy constipation where the woman feels a heaviness in the rectum, a weight in the rectum which, and the hemorrhoids which m regularly bleed, which is important for collinsonia. Now, another important factor for collinsonia to understand is many times chest or heart symptoms like palpitation that may alternate with hemorrhoids. So, chest or heart symptoms this may alternate with hemorrhoids. So, sometimes the patient feels palpitation, sometimes the palpitation is less and the hemorrhoidal bleeding starts again. Whereas, in case of Esculus, two very important concomitants for Esculus is backache. Very many Esculus patients will tell you that when I have the hemorrhoids, with the hemorrhoids I feel an excruciating backache or when the hemorrhoidal pains are worse, I feel the back is aching, the back is giving way and that is very important for Esculus. Also, you will find in Esculus that very often throat is a very important associated factor. In what way throat? Either you can find follicular pharyngitis, so pharyngitis like symptoms. The throat is very sensitive to cold air, it burns when it is exposed to cold air. So, sensitive to air, lot of burning in the throat that you can find with Esculus hippocastana. Also, the third concomitant I will say for Esculus is you can also find worms, especially Ascaris in case of Esculus as well. So, worm infestation with hemorrhoids, throat affection with hemorrhoids, so follicular pharyngitis. You will find burning in the throat, hoarseness, the throat is sensitive to cold air and that is very important for Esculus. And backache is a very important part of Esculus's hemorrhoidal pathology. So, whenever they feel that my hemorrhoidal pains are worse, my backache is also aggravated in case of Esculus. So, that is very important to understand between the two remedies, Esculus, Hippocastinum and Collinsonia, two celebrated remedies for polycrest. So, that is um, both very important, but Collinsonia, remember, it is more bleeding hemorrhoids with lot of constipation in women during pregnancy with sticks in the rectum, constriction in the rectum, weight in the rectum. There is so much portal congestion. Portal congestion is a very important part of Collinsonia's pathology. Portal congestion, pelvic congestion that they feel a weight in the rectum, that they feel the heaviness in the rectum due to the portal congestion. Lot of constipation with hemorrhoids, with pregnancy. And remember chest symptoms, heart symptoms, they can get palpitations. And when the palpitation gets better, the hemorrhoids will start to bleed again and that alternation is a very important part of collinsonia. In many cases, that is not always the rule with collinsonia. You can find the hemorrhoids are better by heat, worse from cold. So, that can be an additional modality for um, collinsonia as well, but that is not always the differentiating factor. Esculus always do not bleed. Remember that, that do not bleed as a rule. Stick sensation, constipation may not, may be there. But backache, throat are two very important additional factors for uh, Esculus pathology. Hemorrhoidal symptoms with throat, throat symptoms with hemorrhoid, that is always a concomitant factor for Esculus. Remember my friends, Esculus is Guernsey's big four in hemorrhoids. Guernsey mentions William, William Jefferson Guernsey. Guernsey has a book on hemorrhoids and that is a very good read for if you are, if you are interested about hemorrhoidal conditions. And Guernsey mentions that my, that my top four remedies in hemorrhoids, one of that is Esculus, the other three are aloes, muriatic acid and sulphur. Aloes, socotrina, muriatic acid, sulphur and Esculus are his top four, big four in hemorrhoids. So, that is very important to understand. Esculus in potency, if you consider the potency of Esculus, 30C, 200C, Collinsonia as well works well in 30C, 200C, even 1M potency if I have had good results with the earlier two.
My third remedy in this list for medium sized remedies or lesser knowns for hemorrhoids is another fantastic medicine called muriatic acid. Remember my friends as it's an acid one of the common rules of all acids is there will be debility. Weakness is a very important factor for all acids. Now when you try and understand for muriatic acid remember it is the most sensitive hemorrhoids of the metromedica more sensitive hemorrhoids so touch of toilet paper touch of the bed sheet that worsens the pain of hemorrhoids so very very sensitive to touch very sensitive hemorrhoids any rectal pathology not just hemorrhoid any rectal pathology when there is a lot of sensitiveness remember muriatic acid becomes a very important remedy the color of muriatic hemorrhoids is generally blue so they look congested they look blue in case of muriatic acid now one of the very important things to understand for muriatic acid is the involuntary nature. What is involuntary? Now whenever they pass stool, there is a sensation as if whenever I'm sorry, whenever they pass wind, there's a sensation as if stool will also pass with it. So involuntary stool on passing wind. You have that in few other medicines, you have that in allosocotrina, you have that in atmure, you have that in podophyllum, you have that in oleander. So whenever they are passing wind, there is a sensation as if stool will also pass involuntarily. And also, whenever they are passing urine as well, there is a sensation as if stool will also pass with it. So you know they cannot go to pass urine without having the stools pass at the same time. So there is a lack of sphincteric control as well with the anal sphincter. Whenever they are passing wind, stool passes involuntarily. Whenever they are passing urine, also stool can pass involuntarily or they can urge for stool while urinating. That is very important. Now another factor for muriatic acid is straining. Now what kind of straining? Whenever they are straining for urination and they have to press a long time before urine starts. Whenever they strain for urination, and because of the constant degree of strain for urine what happens during that straining is they get the protrusion of the hemorrhoids it's difficult to pass the urine so I have to wait a long time for urine to pass like natrium mu and when they are pressing for urination the the hemorrhoids protrude at the same time as well because of the degree of straining which is very important for your muriatic acid so most sensitive hemorrhoids of the metro medica no other remedy in the entire materia medica has this degree of sensitiveness of the rectum as muriatic acid blue hemorrhoids it's also a remedy my remember my friends for children hemorrhoids age 6 age 8 age 10 children develop hemorrhoids blue they will not let mom to see or examine what has happened to the rectum because it's so sensitive plus 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 that's important now when you come across an elderly muriatic acid the weakness of muriatic acid is reflected in the sphincters the anal sphincter is weak so whenever they're passing wind they're not sure where the stool will pass whenever they are passing urine they're not sure where the stool will pass because of the weakness of the acids is reflected in the sphincteric muscles of muriatic acid also whenever they're straining for urination and it's difficult to pass urine it takes a long time what happens the anus protrudes the rectum protrudes they may get pain at the same time as well with muriatic acid at that point of time another important factor for muriatic acid remember please meat aggravates thought of meat sight of meat two top acids which has a meat aggravation is nitric acid and muriatic acid thought of meat sight of meat worsens aggravates their symptoms and that's very important for muriatic acid and lastly do remember the spear of action their sphere of action on the mouth and the anus either what happens as I've shared with you the sphincteric muscle is affected sphincteric muscle is weak that's why there is involuntary stool involuntary stool while passing flatus or while passing wing, um, uh, urine also what happens in muriatic acid you can get a lot of ulcers or aphthous ulcers in the mouth in the anal region as well so a lot of ulcers in the oral cavity as well in case of muriatic acid so remember a debilitated remedy where you have prescribed many other remedies where the patient is coming and telling you that the rectum is very very sensitive to touch 
and the weakness is reflected in the sphincteric muscles, it has to be muriatic acid. And because the vitality is so low, energy is so low, 30C is the safest potency to start with for muriatic acid. And a top remedy for children hemorrhoids, whether hemorrhoids are blue, they will not let them anyone examine or touch it as it's sensitive plus 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 plus. And that's very, very classical for your muriatic acid. Now the next one in this list for muriatic acid, after muriatic acid is allosocotrina. I won't say it's a lesser known remedy because it is a famous and celebrated medicine. And I must share with you N.M. Chaudhary's quotation or words for allosocotrina. To write a materia medica without aloe is like writing a novel without a hero. So if you're planning on writing a materia medica and you're writing it without, a, without aloe sock, it is like writing a novel without a hero. So it, N.M. Chaudhary gives it a hero's position in his materia medica because it's such a wonderful, wonderful remedy in your clinical practice. Now, when you think of just the hemorrhoids of allosocotrina, the hemorrhoids absolutely loo, look blue like bunch of grapes. So it looks like a bunch of grapes. And the factors with allosocotrina, you have to understand, it can be a bleeding hemorrhoids, it can have soreness, and it can have a lot of burning and a hot sensation. So bleeding hemorrhoids, soreness, burning and a hot sensation. And with the, this burning and hot sensation, they're better from cold applications. So apply some cold water, they feel much, much better. And if you consider just this totality, you'll understand that's why aloes is a complementary remedy to sulfur. Aloes and sulfur follow each other very well. You start the case with aloes where you have burning sensation, hot heat in the rectum, better by cold. And you can always follow up, follow up aloes socotrina with sulfur. They follow each other very well, the sister remedies. So that's about the hemorrhoidal aspect of aloes. But you cannot prescribe aloes sock if you do not have two very important factors. Number one and foremost is insecurity of the rectum. What do you mean by insecurity of the rectum? There is total loss of confidence of the anal sphincter. Whenever aloes get an urge for stool, it is very difficult for them to control. It is very difficult for them to hold. You know, they will have to break down the door of the toilet if somebody is inside and they will go inside because there is lack of control of the anal sphincter, loss of confidence of the sphincter and eye. And that urge for aloes, they cannot absolutely hold it. So insecurity of the rectum is a very important factor. And many times aloes will get an urge for stool, especially after a drink, especially after a meal. So eating and drinking aggravation is very important for aloe sock. And the second feature of aloe is aloe stool. And what is the nature of the stool? It is jelly-like lumps of mucus. Obviously, aloes is a remedy for hemorrhoids or rectal diseases. But whenever you come across cases of mucus colitis, you come across cases of constipation, you come across cases of dysentery, but the major factor is jelly-like lumps of mucus are passed in the stool. Sometimes the patient will come and tell you it not passed stool, it's just lumps of mucus which is being passed with the stool. And I can have, do not have any control over the anal sphincter, it just passes involuntarily. Remember these two in combination are a wonderful feature of aloe sock. So jelly-like lumps of mucus. Sometimes just solid stool and ma masses of mucus pass involuntarily. There is no control. There is no security of the anal sphincter, which is very, very important for aloes salt. Like Collinsonia, I mentioned, your aloes is also a wonderful remedy for portal congestion. So portal congestion, pelvic congestion. Borike mentions no remedy has such richer array of symptoms of portal congestion, which is very important. But lastly, one of the things many practitioners, even seasoned practitioners miss out on, about aloe sock is if you open Borike's Metromedica, you'll see in the introduction that it is a remedy which helps in restoring the equilibrium after much dosing. So whenever a patient has come to you after having taken lots of conventional medication, lots of traditional medicines, and the patient has developed hemorrhoids with bleeding, with heat in the rectum, you start the case with Naxomica, obviously, because Naxomica is a universal antidote. Naxomica will antidote all the bad effects of the remedies. But in many cases, Naxomica doesn't help. 
where the patient has tell, told you that I have, my symptoms have started after much dosing, remember allosocotrina. I am reading the line to re-establish physiologic, physiological equilibrium after much dosing. And so a lot of conventional medicines have been taken, a lot of dosing has been done and hemorrhoids have started like bunch of grapes. Naxomica has helped but it is not completely cured or Naxomica has not even touched the case. Remember aloes is a wonderful follow up to that remedy. Also always remember in many cases you will come across where you know your group A remedies, your top rated remedies are not helping you. You must remember your second line of defense. Aloes is a remedy which you don't think on your first visit. But when Naxomica doesn't help you, remember aloes can be a wonderful substitute, wonderful follow up to the same man, uh, etiology of much dosing. Aloes Socotrina works well in 30, 200. I've had many cases where even 1M helped to take care of the insecurity of the rectum. And it's a more neurological aspect to bring back the confidence of the sphincter, to bring back the control of the sphincter. 1M potency helps with aloes as well for insecurity of the rectum.